Right. Well, welcome. So today I, I wanted to um, take you on a little journey through uh, the Mystical Mind Training Program. We're going to focus on one particular module. And um, yeah, this is the pilot of the show. And, and uh, perhaps we'll do this once or twice a week just to give you a taste of this wonderful program that um, I've been a part of for, gosh, almost eight years. It's just, uh, it's really, it's the program that really got me into community, actually. Um, this is a very, very powerful way of bringing my mind back to, uh, to spirit on a regular daily basis. So we'll get into that. Uh, before I, I, I get into any screen sharing and actually get into the program, I want to share a little miracle. Well, not a little miracle. It's a, a big miracle that happened for me yesterday preparing for the show. Um, I had some, or let's put it this way, Jeff had some ideas about how the, the show was going to go. And um, Spirit set me up <laughs> big time. Um, what came up for me was I wanted it to show in a certain way. And um, it, we're just, it, that, that possibility right now isn't there. One of the things that's um, so intriguing and so endearing about mystical mind training <clears throat> is the multimedia aspect of it. So a lot of the, um, um, a lot of the modules have uh, video clips. And at the present moment, we're, we're live streaming to YouTube. And YouTube, of course, has issues with um, copyright. So I was trying to manipulate the whole situation so that you know, we could get around this YouTube thing. And no matter how hard I tried, there was just no way that was going to happen. So I was set up big time. And as I'm, you know, valiantly trying to make this thing work and talking to, you know, some of the team, um, it just became very clear that, you know what, you can't show copyrighted material. So accept what is, is. And it took Jeff a couple hours to figure that out. So I finally did. And I can tell you that, you know, a number of years ago, I would have had a meltdown. I would have said to hell with it. I'm not doing the show. Find somebody else. But um, yeah, again, the setup by spirit was perfect. So what happened was I, I just sat with it and said, OK, so what is it that I can do? And of course, the, the monkey mind is going, oh, my God, this is going to take forever. You know, it's now, you know, four o'clock in the afternoon. You're going to be up till one o'clock in the morning trying to put this show together. And I just sat with that and just got very, very quiet. And this message, this, this message just popped into my mind. And it, it, was, it was totally driven by spirit. And it said, you know, Jeff, you've always thought that you were the exception to the rule. And it's time to undo that and just accept what is, is. And there was absolutely no argument for me at all. I just went, yeah, you know, you're right. This is, this is what I've done. I've always managed to manipulate things so that it went Jeff's way. And I was reminded that that's, you know, that's fine and, and it's taking you to this point. But how many missed opportunities were there? Because you weren't listening. You were too busy trying to have it your way. And it was profound, profound. Um, yeah, it just, it just rocked me. Um, you know, on, on the shows on, on, on a Sunday in particular, I, I'm really attracted to the, to the word humble in, um, in Ricky's, uh, the, the name for Ricky's show. And man, was I humbled yesterday. <laughs> it was absolutely perfect. And it, and it was a setup. It was a setup. I had an idea of what I wanted to do. I wanted to start off right at the top of, of um, Mystical Mind Training and take us through module by module by module by module. And so I, I began to do that. And metaphysics is the first is the first section, and it just wasn't working. It just wasn't working. So I got quiet again, and I was reminded that a couple of days ago, um, miracles, magic, and prayer was in was in the mind. And I well, I don't know where that's coming from. Well, <laughs> that's what the show will be about today: miracles, magic, and prayer. And as I went into the module, um, you know, what I thought was going to take hours and, you know, all this work took about 15 minutes. And um, a, few, a few screens have come up, which I'm going to share with you today. So, um, 
Yeah, miracles, magic, and prayer. And the first miracle was was just the humbling of of the uh, of the little self yesterday, and um, without any judgment, it was just okay. I needed to hear this. You know, sixty four years of trying to do it my way, in, in in you know in sneaky little ways or whatever it was, trying to manipulate the outcome. And um, finally, spirit decided that yesterday was the day to realize that's not going to work anymore. So. Anyway, here we are into the mystic. And um, what I'd like to do, if, if it's possible, Zach, can we start off with a screen share and um, just go right into the, to the, um, the mystical mind training uh, program? Beautiful, beautiful, thank you. Um, so this is what it looks like. It's, um, it's at www.mysticalmindtraining.com. And there's, you know, it's just a, there's a beautiful introduction, uh, introduction here. There's, you, know, you can click on start to get some program information. The intro is actually um, takes you into a, an introductory experience. Maybe you just uh, click on introduction experience, Zach, please. That's great, thanks. And it's and just uh, if you can just slowly scroll down just get a, to get a sense of what it is that uh, that's there. There's Buddha in the cloud. I love that picture. And I, and I love this picture. This is this is phenomenal. Uh, you know, the ship turning upside down, and that's really what is happening. Um, you know, as we get deeper and deeper into the, into a course in miracles, the whole world gets turned upside down, and certainly the um, the manipulation piece of Jeff got turned upside down yesterday. <laughs> that's for sure. So yeah, so that that's kind of the introduction. Um, if you want to just go back to the to the uh, main screen again, Zach, that would be great. Yeah, thanks. And so um, under program categories, it shows us all of the uh, programs that are coming up. There's a um, year one. If you want to click on year one, Zach, that'll that's great. Thanks. And so here's all of the, the courses that are in year one. Um, it's, it's divided up into 24 modules, one per year, um, 12 per year, uh, one per month. And so that gives you a, a little bit of a description about what's happening in each of the programs. And it, it, the course is designed to go through from uh, the beginning through to the end. Um, it, it, everything, uh, each module builds on the previous module. And so that's something that... Um, it's just an amazing program. It was put together um, a number of years ago by uh, Jason and um, uh, Kirsten and a couple of other friends, and they just poured their heart into this, and you can absolutely feel it. And it certainly caught my heart and uh, brought me into the uh, into the course. Um, it, it, it's it's wonderful. It really is. Um, and it really is a way, especially, you know, at the time I wasn't in community, if you will, but it, it, I, it felt like I was joining, uh, part of the program is, um, um, you have a, a mystical mind training partner and you, um, as you're going through the course, it's nice to join with them once a week, just as, you know, just to say, Hey, here's what's, here's what's on my mind. Here's what's up for me at the moment. And it's just, it's all in the joining. And that really leads into the whole community uh, aspect um, of mystical mind training. It is about joining. You know, we're not going to go home by ourselves. We're going to go home together. And so the, the whole the whole crux of this um, uh, teaching, of the teachings from A Course in Miracles, um, and it's found in the mystical mind training program, is this idea of joining. So that's a, a really important piece. Uh, maybe we can just go back to the main page again, please, um, Zach. Great. Thank you. Well, that's the opening screen. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's very easy to, to uh, work your way through. Um, I just love it. It's just, it's just been a, a huge part of my life. So I think what we'll do, um, I, the miracles, uh, magic and training, uh, miracles, magic and prayer, um, it was definitely something that, that came in from spirit. I kind of missed the prompt, but it came in very strong yesterday. So if we can go to the first uh, screen of uh, miracles, magic and prayers, Zach, that would be great. 
So here's a here's the uh, a, a piece from the section of Miracles, Magic, and Prayer, and it's basically defining uh, what a miracle is um, with this um, with the the TMTJ, which is the mystical teachings of Jesus. So we're pulling some excerpts from that book. So um, I'll just start to read a little bit about what mystical teachings of Jesus has to say about miracles. And what's beautiful about uh, mystical teachings is it pulls um, uh, references from the Bible and puts them into a, a, an ACI uh, context. So, the mystical teachings of Jesus, thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. A miracle is a service. It is a way of loving your neighbor as yourself. You recognize your own and your neighbor's worth simultaneously. Basically, I see the Christ in myself. I see the Christ in you. Miracles are teaching devices. I love this. Are teaching devices for demonstrating it is as blessed to give as to receive. They simultaneously increase the strength of the giver and supply strength to the receiver. And David has talked about this many, many times that giving and receiving are exactly the same thing. And so there's a, a little parable here. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment <laughs> and, wounded him, and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, uh, when he was at this, at this uh, place, came and looked at him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three, thinkest thou, was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, he, he that showed mercy on him, then said Jesus unto him, go and do likewise. And this is it's just a beautiful reminder that as we go through the teachings of the course, to take them, and uh, we call it transfer of training, to take what we've learned and to use it, to experience it. And, and that's one of the things about community. The community is, 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 a, is a group um, that take the teachings of the course and use it as an experience on a daily basis. So it knows it's no longer just an intellectual uh, piece. It's actually living A Course in Miracles. Um, and it's a beautiful thing. It really is. So um, another excerpt, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done unto me. And then from the Course, when you offer a miracle to any of my brothers, you do it to yourself and me. When you have been restored to the recognition of your original state, you naturally become part of the atonement yourself. As you share my unwillingness to accept error in yourself and others, you must join the great crusade to correct it. Listen to my voice. Learn to undo error and act to correct it. The power to work miracles belongs to you. I will provide the opportunities to do them. And he most definitely provided that opportunity for me yesterday. <laughs> but you must be ready and willing. Doing them will bring conviction in the ability because conviction comes through accomplishment. The ability is the potential. The achievement is its expression. And the atonement, which is the natural profession of the children of God is the purpose. Beautiful. Maybe you just scroll down a little bit further, uh, Zach.
Yeah, that's great. Thank you. And from the course, I'm not going to read all of these. I'm just, I just want to pick up some of the, the highlights. Um, the next one is miracles enable you to heal the sick and raise the dead because you made sickness and death yourself and can therefore abolish both. You are a miracle capable of creating in the likeness of your creator. Everything else is your own nightmare and does not exist. Only the creations of light are real. Very powerful, very powerful piece. Ultimately, every member of the family of God must return. The miracle calls him to return because it blesses and honors him. Even though he may be absent in spirit, God is not mocked, is not a warning, but a reassurance. God would be mocked if any of his creations lacked holiness. The creation is whole, and the mark of wholeness is holiness. Miracles are affirmations of sonship, which is a state of completion and abundance. Beautiful. Yeah, miracles are, are, are natural, and if they're not happening, then, then we, there's a correction necessary. They should be happening on a regular basis. And, um, and sometimes they happen and we don't even notice them, and, and that's okay. But miracles, the change in perception, um, is something that, that happens on a regular basis. And if it's not, that's okay. It just means that we've allowed our minds to wander, and we need to come back to spirit. Yeah, something that, that, that's come to me over the last while very, very clearly uh, in terms of this concept of miracles, this change in perception, is that we're really never in control. We're either listening to the voice of the ego or the voice of the Holy Spirit. And of those, only one is real. So there really isn't even a choice. So if we want the miracles, then we've got to be listening to Holy Spirit because ego is not going to produce any miracles, any tangible miracles. So it's a great way of, of, of knowing who, who am I listening to. If the miracles aren't happening, I'm listening to the wrong voice. It's beautiful. Okay, miracles. On to the next page, please, Zach. And so this is just, this is where David's going to reinforce this whole concept that you, we, me, us are miracles. Um, David talks about the experience of letting go of the ego, which is the miracle in itself. It's the change of perception of who we think we are. We seek the vision of Christ, the light beyond the veil. Your attention moves towards miracles and serving God by changing perception. There is intrinsic joy in being a miracle worker. Intrinsic joy. And when I accepted that yesterday, it was joy. But until that time, <laughs> I was in a battle. And it was a battle I was not going to win. You no longer have the same appetites, which is surprising to the ego. There is no struggle in this. They just fade away. You outgrow being human. It is a natural flow. And I felt that totally yesterday. I had complete peace of mind. It was like all of a sudden, all the thoughts in my mind just stopped when I listened and accepted that I need to stop trying to manipulate the world and to listen and follow. It's beautiful. Okay. If you want to start the video, that would be great. Um, thank you.
<laughs> okay, it looks like there, there's a, a little technical glitch there trying to, uh, to get into the, um, into the program. I'll give them a, a couple of minutes, but you know, this whole idea of miracles, magic, and prayer, it's just something that, that it's, just, it's beautiful that we start off with a miracle, we look at what magic is, and then we end up in prayer. And, uh, and that's how we make the, truly make the connection to, uh, uh, to God. Um, Zach, maybe you can just go to the next screen and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll bypass the video for now. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you can just go back one, one screen, yeah, um, back to, um, to magic. We've talked about miracles. I just want to get into magic. There we go. Okay, so we've, we've talked about miracle. Um, we'll, get the, we'll get the video at some point from David. Uh, that video, by the way, is, is more than likely available on YouTube. It's a great video. Um, I'll try and get you the, the link at some point. So when we talk about magic, so um, by definition, it, it's an important area um, which to be clear. So the gentle, truly helpful, helpful approach can be taken with oneself when it comes to the use of magic. So as Jesus teaches, it may be wise to utilize a compromise um, to approach uh, mind and body in which something from outside is temporarily given healing belief. When this is done, you could say that magic has been used. The awakening path now becomes letting the Holy Spirit use the symbols of the world in a helpful way, which is the appropriate use of magic, until, we, uh, until the need for magic is undone. And that's, that's beautiful about Jesus. Like Jesus and the Holy Spirit realize that sometimes, you know, uh, an aspirin is necessary or, or whatever it is, um, to, to relieve the symptom. The issue with magic is it only relieves the symptom. It doesn't actually undo the core belief that's causing the pain or the, the, um, the lack of clarity in the mind. But the Course is beautifully written, and Jesus will meet us wherever we are. And if, you know, the, the, the fear of um, um, uh, opening the mind to healing is greater than the fear of taking the magic, then use the magic. It's okay. It's not a problem. Um, he goes on to say um, uh, from the Course, there are no laws except the laws of God. This needs repeating over and over until you realize it applies to everything that you have made in opposition to God's will. Your magic has no meaning. What it is meant to save does not exist because we're only looking at the symptom not at the cause. And David is beautiful in this and very uncompromising um, and talks about um, disease is never of the body, dis-ease, never of the body, always of the mind. And so the, the, the beautiful training that seems to take time is to take everything back to the mind and go, what, what's underneath this? Where, what is the cause? And to take it to prayer and, and to ask Jesus for that, um, for that clarity. Magic thoughts need, lot, need not lead to condemnation, for they do not really have the power to give rise to guilt. All material means that you accept as remedies for bodily ills are restatements of magic principles. This is the first step in believing that the body makes its own illness. It is a second misstep to attempt to heal it through non-creative agents. It does not follow, however, that the use of such agents for corrective purposes is evil. So to remove that judgment that we've done something wrong. Sometimes the illness has a sufficiently strong hold over the mind to render a person temporarily inaccessible to the atonement. And that's okay. In this case, it may be wise to utilize a compromise approach um, to mind and body in which something from outside is temporarily given healing belief. This is because the last thing that can help the non-right-minded or the sick is an increase in fear. 
they are already in a fear weakened state. If they prematurely are um, exposed to a miracle, that may be precipitated into panic. This is likely to occur when the upside down perception has induced the belief that miracles are frightening. Interesting. The avoidance of magic is the avoidance of, for tem of temptation, for all temptation is nothing more than the attempt to substitute another will for God's. When all magic is recognized as merely nothing, the teacher of God has reached the most advanced state. And interme all intermediate lessons will lead to this and bring the school nearer to recognition for magic of any kind in all its forms simply does nothing. Pretty clear, pretty clear. Okay, and if we can just go to the next uh, screen. So we've done miracles, we've talked about magic, and now uh, we're gonna get into prayer. Um, in fact, if you can go to the, next, to, to, the, to the next screen, that would be great. I notice we're running out of time, so it's all good. So in the course, there are assignments, and um, this is an assignment that I'm gonna leave you with. So the prayer from A Course in Miracles is perhaps the most well-known and practiced prayer on the course, in the course. If it is not already common practice for you, use this prayer as a way to align your mind often and overcome uh, over the coming 10 days. So go through the following prayer before every phone call that you make, at the beginning of every meeting that you hold or take part in, before going through a doorway at least once every day. And the prayer, I am here only to be truly helpful. I am here to represent him who sent me. I do not have to worry about what to say or what to do, because he who sent me will direct me. I am content to be wherever he wishes, knowing he goes there with me. I will be healed as I let him teach me to heal. And so just try to do this on a, on a, uh, on a regular basis if you can. Um, don't judge if you don't, it's, it's fine. Um, and then after a few days of doing that, um, share your experiences with your mind training partner, anyone uh, that's in, the, uh, in, in your um, Mighty Companion group. And uh, yeah, when you're in the program, there's forums and so on that you can fill out and, and uh, type that information. And this is just a, a brief introduction into that program. But these are the kind of assignments that come up where it's, just take, it's taking the teachings and actually put them, putting them into um, an experiential place. And it works. I can tell you from experience, it works. <laughs> and uh, a little piece of Jeff got undone yesterday and it was all in preparation for this course. It's all, you know, it's all about me. All of what we're, we're learning, it's always for the healing of our mind. So thanks for joining. Um, we're at the end of the show and uh, I appreciate you being here. We'll see you next time. Lots of love.